As a long-time Linux user, I'm very comfortable using the terminal and command line to run commands, to administer my system, to do things like install packages, change file permissions, uh, you name it, you know, any kind of sysadmin type tasks. It, I'm pretty comfortable on the command line. And I'm also a web developer and I use WordPress quite a lot. And one of the things about WordPress that kind of bugs me from time to time is the amount of sort of clicking and page refreshing and things that need to happen in the dashboard to take care of even the most basic admin tasks, setup tasks, installing plugins, themes, um, looking at users, pages, posts, everything you can imagine, you know, and all of it requires some amount of clicking and navigating the UI page refreshes and just extra time to do things that if I could do them from the command line would be much faster and also much more direct. So instead of needing to click through three different levels to get to something, I could just run a command and have that thing happen. Well, it turns out there is a command line interface for WordPress and it is called WPCLI and it is available as a small download, a single file that you can essentially install on your server in order to run commands against your WordPress installation. So the basic ins installation is just downloading the file, setting the executable bit, putting it in the right place, testing it out. You can also optionally have like tab completions if you wanted to be able to start typing a command and have it uh, tab complete the command. So I've already have I already have this set up on a site and this is just a basic stock install of WordPress and if you've installed WordPress before you know that it comes as sort of a blank slate with the exception of a few things there's a couple there's a post there is a default page and a few plugins so one of the first things I would normally do with a stock install is to remove these plugins and the the dummy content so that would require coming in here and you know selecting these things and again i'm not trying to make this out as some sad story where it's so difficult to use the wordpress admin panel the dashboard's great it's uh it's performant you know depending on your server obviously but i'm not saying it's a major problem but when you do it enough it's the type of thing where you just want to find a way to streamline it and that's really where this comes into play so if i jump into a website here and I have a just a test site. The this is the back end of that test site we were just looking at. And I make this a little bigger. And I run the WP command. What it's going to do is show me what commands are available and then maybe how to use some of them. Now I happen to know what many of them are just from using them and I want to see what plugins are installed. So I'm going to list the plugins and it's going to show me the two plugins that I just showed you through the, uh, through the back end in the plugin section. And so I don't want either of those. So what I can do is WP plugin uninstall. Let's say hello. And there it tells me it's uninstalled. And if I, Take a look at the list. Again, you see it's, it is now not listed. And if I come into the back end here and refresh my installed plugins, it's also gone from there. So very simple example, but obviously, uh, you mean, I, I hope you can see how, how powerful something like that is. So let's get rid of the other one. And in addition to uninstalling, you can also install. So let me, install and actually another really cool thing is you can search right against the WordPress plugin repository. So I really like the duplicator plugin for managing sites, uh, making quick backups, moving sites and things like that. But let's say um, I wasn't sure what the name of it was because you need to, you need to have the full explicit name. So anything with duplicator as a keyword is going to show up here. And what I want, is the first one and it just happens to be called duplicator. So instead of searching for it, I can say install. And you can see it'll just, it knows to, you know, go to the wordpress.org plugin repository and download it. It's as though you were going through the front end and doing the search there, it's the same exact thing back here. So it installed it, but if we look, it's not active by default. And so I want to activate it now. 
So I can say activate and it's successfully activated. And if I come back to the site now and look at plugins, not only will it show duplicator, but it also shows it set up down here and ready to go. I can do the same thing with themes. So let's take a look at the themes that are currently installed. And let's say I wanted to install generate press. That's, that's, that's a good theme. I can do the same thing here. I can search the repository. Let's just say generate and see what happens. And so we've got a bunch of different options here and it is called generate press. So I want to just go ahead and say install. And there you go. So now if I did the list again, it shows me which themes are, inst are installed and which one is active. And if I want to activate it, So I, I think you're, you, you can see where this is going, obviously. So now if I look at themes again, generate press is here, it's activated. One last thing I'll, I'll tell you. So a common admin task that comes up is regenerating thumbnails. Let's say you're designing a site or you've made a significant change to a site. You've inherited a site that you're redesigning, but you wanna use the existing content, but your image sizes have changed. There are plugins to do this and you actually come in here and search for regenerate. And you look at the plugin itself, they'll actually tell you there's a better way to do this. So if you have a command line access to your server, I highly recommend using, zoom that in, I highly recommend using WPCLI instead of this plugin as it's faster and can be run inside of a screen for those who, with many thumbnails. And for, so if we go back and look here at the media regenerate, so WP media, well, WP help media, let's see what that gives us. Imports files, regenerates thumbnails, or lists registered image sizes. So let's say image size. WP media image size. And here are image sizes. And again, if you were to change these for any reason, WordPress has generated the thumbnails for these or the image sizes for these. Uh, as files as part of adding new media. So every time you upload an image, it's going to create these four additional sizes. The full is just the full file itself, but then you've got these four additional inbuilt sizes and you can change this. You may see different options here depending on a theme you have installed or a plugin. But suffice to say, if you were to change those sizes, then you need to regenerate the thumbnails for the images to, uh, to actually be properly sized and to look right, have the ac right aspect ratio. And so this is the most straightforward and easiest way to do that. All right, with that, I think I've covered the ground I wanna cover in this video. I hope you find this useful and interesting. I hope if you're a, an admin of a WordPress site or someone using WordPress, this is a tool that you could adopt that would make your life easier. It has certainly made my life much easier. Thank you for watching the video and stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, please leave them below. Remember to subscribe to see my new videos coming out. As always, take care and I'll see you again next time.